Hi and welcome back for another video. In this one I'm going to be going through everything you need to know about Gran Turismo 7 and there's a fair bit to cover so get comfy. I'll put chapters in the description to make it easier for you to find specific information. For those not familiar with the series, Gran Turismo, or GT for short, is PlayStation's flagship driving game and it's appeared on consoles in one form or another since the very first PlayStation. It's always been developed by Polyphony Digital in Japan, with Kazunori Yamauchi behind the vision of the games. The series tries to encompass all areas of car culture and bills itself as the real driving simulator, but its handling model is best described as Simcade. It's a lot more in depth than the likes of Need for Speed, but not as detailed a simulation as something like iRacing or Assetto Corsa. Gran Turismo 7 will be launching on March the 4th, 2022 for both PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. GT7 is the first fully featured Gran Turismo game since the PS3. On PS4 we had GT Sport, which was mainly an online offering for competitive racing. The single player side of things was reduced to a few challenges and track tests. Returning to the series in GT7 is a full campaign mode. This has you starting out as a novice driver with a basic car and has you having to compete in events and complete challenges to earn money to access better vehicles. The series notorious license tests make a return as part of this. These helped you learn how to race with tutorials and challenges based around things like cornering or overtaking. They were easy enough to get a basic pass on, but trying to get gold medals in these challenges was pretty tricky in earlier games. A new feature for the Gran Turismo 7 campaign is the Car Cafe. This gives you a car collection menu that you complete by winning races and championships, and as you collect the cars you learn about the history behind them, sometimes directly from the car designers themselves. Another new single player feature is Music Rally, which is a checkpoint race set against a music track that uses the beats of the music to determine how long you have left, rather than seconds. You have to drive as far as you can before your beats total hits zero, with more beats earned as you reach checkpoints. Presumably the beats count down faster when you're playing to a more energetic music track. Returning to the single player from GT Sport are the Circuit Experience and Mission Challenges. Circuit Experience tests help you learn each of the circuits in the game, giving you a time to beat for each sector of the track, as well as a full lap time trial. Mission challenges give you scenarios to complete that are outside of the regular races and time trials. You might have to beat a car in a drag race or overtake a certain number of cars in a given time. Also in GT7 are drifting trials where you have to compete using your drifting techniques. As well as these events, you can just set up single custom races or time trials with your preferred set of vehicles, circuit and conditions. It looks like multi-class racing is also available in this mode. On the multiplayer side of things, there are a few different options available. First up, there is two-player split screen for those who like a bit of couch competition. For online multiplayer, the offerings are a lot like we see in GT Sport. There are custom lobbies where you can race online against friends using your choice of vehicles, tracks and game mode. And there's also organised online ranked races you can take part in, which are split into daily races like GT Sport. The track, race conditions and car selection are determined for you, and you have to set a qualifying time to determine your starting point on the grid. Matchmaking is done via your driver and sportsmanship ratings, as with GT Sport, to try and keep races competitive. Your ratings are set by your finishing position in the races and how cleanly you race, with the values being updated after each event. If you have played the GT Sport multiplayer, your driver and sportsmanship ratings will be carried over to Gran Turismo 7. That's how you race, but you'll need something to race on, and the game will contain 34 tracks at launch, which are a mixture of real world and fantasy tracks, and these come with nearly 100 different configurations to race on. All of the real world tracks from GT Sport will be present in the game, plus Daytona Raceway. The roster of fantasy tracks from GT Sport will also be in GT7, along with some returning classics from earlier games in the series. New versions of High Speed Ring, Trial Mountain and Deep Forest have been confirmed. Apricot Hill has been teased, but it looks like that'll be coming after launch, along with even more tracks in due course. 
As for the cars, the game will have over 400 available at launch, including everything that was in GT Sport, plus another 80 or so. Like with the tracks, there will be more added to the game in future. Most manufacturers are included, but there are some notable absences from the list such as Bentley and Lotus. There's always a good variety of car types in Gran Turismo, so expect to see anything from daily drivers to high-speed concept race cars. Cars are organised into classes with regular road cars appearing in Group N, which is further split into N100 to N1000. Racing cars are organised from Group 4 up to Group 1, rally cars end up in Group B, and there's also a Group X for the high-speed monsters that don't fit into the other categories. Gran Turismo 7 sees the return of the tuning shop that allows you to upgrade and modify your cars. There are approximately 60 different performance parts available per car, which covers everything from engine components to tyre compounds to allow you to tune your vehicle for specific events. It also looks as though engine swaps might be available for you to try out some more interesting builds. As well as performance parts, there are plenty of cosmetic upgrades available to modify the look of your car. Over 650 aerodynamic parts, 130 different wheel types and over 1200 paint colours should allow you to express your creativity on the track. Roll cages and wide body kits are also available for some vehicles. The comprehensive livery editor from GT Sport has been expanded further in Gran Turismo 7 and now allows you to paint onto the windows of vehicles. The limit of the number of decals you can put on a car has also been increased to let your imagination run riot. Liveries that you've created in GT Sport will be transferred over to GT7, although complex designs might end up slightly different due to changes in the system. To keep your cars in top condition, Gran Turismo 7 sees the return of car washes and oil changes, along with indicators that show the status of the oil engine and bodywork. There doesn't appear to be much of an actual damage model in the game though, as manufacturers don't like to see their licensed cars being smashed to pieces. New cars are acquired by completed events and challenges or by purchasing them from one of three in-game dealerships. Grand Central is the place to go for brand new cars that were manufactured after 2001 and features around 300 cars from over 50 manufacturers from America, Europe and Asia Pacific. For cars manufactured before then, there's a used car dealership that allows you to buy cars at a cheaper price, although there are some classics in there that are still pretty expensive. For the ultimate in exclusivity, there is the Legend Cars showroom which contains a few hand-picked classic cars that have made their name in history, most of which have a legendary price point to match. The car physics have been refined in Gran Turismo 7 in consultation with racing drivers, tyre manufacturers and top FIA GT Championship drivers, so that lap times will reflect real-life counterparts. The aerodynamic models for the cars use computational flow dynamics to accurately simulate things like the effect of wind direction at the circuit or the slipstream from other cars. GT7 now also has a detailed dynamic weather and time of day system. Clouds are formed based on realistic data from the part of the world where the racing is taking place. Similarly, the night sky shows an accurate depiction of stars and planets for the circuit's location. All of the tracks will have a dynamic day to night cycle, but some of them where 24 hour racing takes place will also have the corresponding night to day cycle. For tracks where rain simulation is enabled, the rain will form puddles on the tarmac in a realistic way and a wet circuit will gradually dry on the racing line before the rest of the track. The atmospheric conditions are also simulated based on the weather and temperature in that location which will have a dynamic effect on tyre grip, engine power and slipstream effect. Cars now have a rain radar and moisture indicator on the hood, so you can see where the wettest part of the circuits are. On larger circuits like the Nordschleife, it's possible for part of the circuit to be affected by rain, while other parts are still dry. Hopefully the full dynamic and time of day cycle will be extended to more tracks in future. The race replay system has been expanded from what we saw in GT Sport with the addition of music replays. These will dynamically switch your camera angle based on the music track that is playing in the background. The game features over 300 audio tracks, including a few from licensed artists, so there should be a plenty of variation in the clips you can create. The fully featured race photo mode from GT Sport is also present in the new game, along with the excellent scapes feature. 
Scapes allows you to superimpose a car from the game into one of over 2,500 background images from around the globe. It's a very clever system and can produce some very realistic photo images. Adding to the realism on PS5 is the option to have ray tracing enabled for Scapes photos and race replays, as well as create HDR images on compatible displays. Screenshots, replays and liveries that players create are grouped in the showcase area, which is essentially the discover feature from GT Sport. It acts like a social media hub of sorts, where you have a newsfeed of things that you've created or from other players that you follow. Other players can view, like and comment on your shared images and replays, or download shared liveries. Graphics in the game look to be improved over GT Sport from the PS5 footage we've seen so far. At the time recording, we've yet to see any video of the game running on PS4. I'll be sure to share some of that when it gets released. The game menus have been updated too, with everything now accessed from a central 3D map of the Gran Turismo world. Locations on the map relate to the different activities you can select in the game. When playing, the camera views and on-screen graphics look very similar to GT Sport, with the addition of the weather radar that I mentioned earlier. The regular car radar looks more zoomed out than before, showing more vehicles on screen. On PS5, the reactive triggers and haptic feedback of the DualSense controller are used to more accurately convey the state of the car. Things like tyres locking under braking or over and understeer will be transmitted to the player through the controller to provide a more immersive experience. The 3D audio capabilities of the PS5 will also be used to provide more accurate positioning for the noise of other cars on the track and various environmental sounds, further enhancing both the atmosphere and immersion. If you prefer to use a steering wheel rather than a controller, Fanatec have produced an official Direct Drive GT7 wheel, Polyphony and PlayStation for use in the game. If your budget doesn't stretch to that, the other main consumer wheels from the likes of Fanatec, Thrustmaster and Logitech should also be supported. The game comes in a couple of different versions, the Standard Edition and the 25th Anniversary Edition. The Standard Edition is available for PS4 and PS5 separately and contains just the game. If you pre-ordered the digital edition, there's a bonus of some credits and three cars. I've seen some retailers doing the same pre-order items for the disc version as well. The 25th anniversary edition is available digitally or on disc for the PS5. You also get access to the digital version of the PS4 game with both of those. You also get a load of credits, a Toyota Yaris with a country specific livery and some PSN avatars based around cars in the game. There's also a digital album included with a few songs from the game's soundtrack. The physical version comes in a steelbook case, but you get less credits for some reason. Overall, it looks like Gran Turismo 7 will be a return to the sort of game we expect from the series, with a fully featured campaign plus some new features and technical enhancements. I'll be looking forward to taking it for a spin when it launches on March the 4th. I've been Jimster71, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, a dislike if you didn't, and don't forget to subscribe for lots more GT7 content coming up. Until then, bye for now.